in our live channel. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's meeting of Suffolk Public Sector Leaders. I'm Councillor Susie Morley, Leader of Mid Suffolk District Council, and I'll be opening the meeting today. This meeting is being broadcast live and is available to watch on Suffolk County Council's website whilst we're in public session. If I can move to the agenda, a welcome apologies. A any apologies? We've just had apologies from uh, CJ Green, Chair of the New Anglia LEP. Lovely. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and if I can hand over to you, Car Caroline, to confirm any actions arising from the minutes of the last meeting. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no, there are no actions arising um, and the notes have been circulated with the papers. So hopefully uh, that's, uh, we can agree those are the record of the previous meeting. OK, thank you. Um, can I ask for agreement of the, of the notes? I'll take yes, no responses. Yes. <laughs> thank you. You're happy? No hands? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, everybody. Um, moving on to the RCG and SCG update. Um, I'd like to welcome Nicola Beach to the meeting and she's chair of the Recovery Coordinating Group. And um, can you give us an update, Nicola? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, members. Uh, yes, just an, a brief update on the uh, the Recovery Coordination Group and the, the uh, SCG stands for the Strategic Coordination Group. The Recovery Coordination Group, as the name suggests, focuses more on the recovery uh, post-pandemic. The Strategic Coordination Group was the was more of the response at the time. And the, the uh, RCG is the main, um, now the main group focusing on this on behalf of the Local Resilience Forum. It's a multi-agency uh, body, so it has local council representation, public health, police, uh, NHS and, and many other bodies as well. Um, I chair it and, 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 and uh, I'm very well supported by Stephen Baker, uh, the vice, vice chairman of the group as well. We've been meeting fortnightly for the last uh, few months. We feel that's the right frequency at the moment. And the meeting focuses on the current national position, the local position and pressures and issues in the system. So not just in terms of COVID cases and hospitalisation, but other public health matters pressure on the NHS, and then we also get feedback from the police and regulatory services, such as environmental health and trading standards for feedback. We also keep an eye on the, the uptake of vaccinations, and, I'm, and I was very pleased to hear the report this morning uh, around the areas of Mid-Suffolk being one of the highest take-up in the, in the country. Um, and of course, that's an important part of our recovery um, work in the, in, the, in the country and in Suffolk. We also review uh, communication messages and campaigns, um, and the meeting also focuses on our recovery themes of feedback around economic growth and businesses, community support and resilience, well-being, healthcare, education and the environment. And, and as, a, as a recovery group, but as a representative of the Local Resilience Forum, we've also had discussions on other issues such as our support for the resettlement of Afghan uh, citizens and also the shortage of HGV drivers, which I know is a national issue and, and well reported on. We're also working on uh, winter planning uh, and, it, and the RCG will be the main multi-agency strategic body which will be responsible for our response to the government's autumn and winter plan, obviously looking ahead uh, over the next few months. So our main focus is to keep an eye on the current situation, to make sure we're taking the right actions at the right time and to support the recovery of the county. It is a representation of the Suffolk system. Um, and I think it's right that we keep that work going for the moment. I think it's a very important co coordinating body and to give members reassurance and the public today uh, that we are um, keeping a very close eye on what is uh, coming down the track as well. But very the positive note, very much moving towards Suffolk fully opening up and recovery as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nicola. Anybody got any questions or comments for, for Nicola? Tim? Yeah, thanks, um, uh, and, and Nicola. And just wanted to say, I think uh, the pandemic the last 18 months has clearly been a very good example, an excellent example of how we all work together. I don't think there's any question on that. And I suspect Suffolk has uh, once again risen to the challenge with the problem being one of the best coordinated responses elsewhere. What I wanted to ask, though, there will come a time when we need to review and learn the lessons of how we've all responded. We can always do better. Uh, it's not a criticism. When, Nicola, will that be bearing in mind the response to the short-term challenges of a pandemic or any other emergency for that matter? 
and also any lessons we can learn about economic recovery and development because uh, as you know that's one of the things i'm particularly interested in and it's so vital we do everything we can to support that recovery and uh, get back to normal thank you Thank you, Chair. I'll re respond if I may. Thank you for your question, um, uh, Tim. The, um, in terms of learning the lessons, you're absolutely right. We have. I, I will come back to you on exact timings, but it will be over the next couple of months. We've already the local resilience forum um, have already engaged uh, um, a, a body that is very adept at uh, looking at the lessons, doing a piece of research. So we will be asked to input that. I will make sure that includes um, the SPSL as well. Um, and we look across that. So how we responded, how it's working now, the recovery piece. So there is a national piece of work that LRFs are doing uh, and we will certainly do our part in that. And we will make it, as of course, specific to Suffolk as well. So that, that is in train. We did consider doing that towards the earlier part of this year but it just felt as we the timing's got to be right i think when when people can just perhaps just step back and reflect on what's gone equally if you leave it too long memories fade and we don't we don't capture that qualitative and quantitative data so that is in train i will come back uh, with more detail in, in an email just to uh, to give you a bit more detail on that and for the whole of spsl thanks very much thank you thank you Ollie, thank you thank you nicola thank you tim Moving on now to item four, uh, our governance paper, um, and this is going to be, I'm going to hand over to Ian Gallen um, as SCORT Chair, who's been reviewing SPSL's terms of reference. Over to you, Ian. Morning, Chair. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, so um, this will be, I, I think, very, very familiar. We've discussed this a number of times. Um, we've had terms of reference since uh, 2018. Um, we've uh, undertaken a, a review of that. I've had a number of conversations with you as leaders individually and, and collectively. Uh, and uh, just very quickly, just to summarise it, we, we concluded that uh, very uh, the, the terms of reference we've got are still uh, very much fit for purpose. Um, and we're just seeking to update those and to uh, sort of adopt them and roll them forward again. Uh, in terms of just those uh, slight changes we want to make, I think we've recognised the, uh, the the benefit and the flexibility that meeting remotely has given us all. So we want to bake that in as more of the uh, uh, more of the model moving forward. But of course, we help always have the ability to meet in person as we uh, as we need to. Uh, we'll obviously then be, be able to record the meetings as as a, as a record of that. Uh, and with your agreement, if you've agreed the terms of reference today. We'll start publishing a forward work plan that will hopefully enable leaders to then focus on the commissioning approach. Uh, that we've been discussing. So um, I think they'll be very familiar to leaders. Chair, we've been through them a number of times, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Ian? Tim? Yeah, that, um, there we are, the technology. But yeah, thanks. Not so much a question, um, actually, Susie, and uh, morning, Ian. morning, everybody else, for that matter. Um, when it comes to substitutes, obviously, I can't have a substitute because you will be blessed. <laughs> there is only one of me. You know? <laughs> um, but I just wanted to make it clear. I think substitutes are important if you can't attend. But um, just a commitment for myself will certainly liaise with the constabulary to make sure if there are views to put forward, but I'll do that anyway. And I'm, obviously, I know everybody very well. But I think it is important that all organisations are fully um, involved and do have substitutes, be it from local authorities ourselves, whoever, because if we really work together, it's important that we are all at the table to help make these decisions and uh, move it forward. So just a comment, not really a question, but if that could be noted down, then you can yes. hold me to account equally. Thank you very much. Yes, really good point, Tim. I would encourage everybody to, to send subs if they feel they can't attend. John? Um, thanks, Susie, and morning, everybody. I um, just totally agree with Tim, but happy to move the... Um, recommendations that Ian has bring forward and we, as he says we've all discussed it so more than happy to propose that if, if you need that. Lovely thank you. Um, is everybody in agreement for approval? Absolutely. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much everybody. Moving on to item 5a. Uh, we've got Stephen Baker joined us I think somewhere. Um, as the sponsoring chief exec for the inclusive growth priority, um, perhaps you can introduce it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Chair. Um, Karen Chapman would normally be alongside me, uh, and she certainly has much more awareness of the detail. But unfortunately, she's on leave at the moment. She's uh, taken her daughter to university. So it's down to me to, to provide SPSL with this update. 
on progress with the SIGIF fund, the Suffolk in, uh, Inclusive Growth uh, in Fund. Now, um, this is just an update, as I say, following the allocation of funds by the Suffolk uh, public sector leaders a little while ago. And you'll recall that that funding unlocked a million pounds worth of funding from uh, the New Anglia LEP. And we've invited bids from via local authorities because all of the projects must be sponsored by a local authority in order to get into the round and then be considered. And um, you recall that the uh, there's a small panel, myself, Mark Ash from the County Council, Chris Starkey from the LEP, and to get that business input, we've included John Dugmore on the process as well, with along with Karen, to make sure to uh, make sure the funds are allocated appropriately. Now the background to this, members, um, you don't really need reminding, but I'll remind you anyway. We know that our high streets are under significant challenge at the moment. And we're coupled with that. We know that business generally is uh, struggling with the uh, pandemic recovery. And so there is a need for innovation. There's a need for skills development and there's a need for investment. And indeed, this is captured in in the report, in the diagram, which uh, has been provided. Uh, this are the ovals and all this sort of thing, the property and investment in business space, the high street support, support for employees, those joining the labour market apprentices and uh, and those sorts of things and then skills for business as well so the uh, using those reference points this is advising uh, SBSL how the money has been allocated so far there's not everything has been spent there is still money to be spent in further bids of rounds but if you want me to go through uh, chair the projects I can um, I don't think you're gonna want me to go through all the detail because that will take up <laughs> most of the meeting um, but um, uh, it really, the report is here for members to note. Um, the, the, the funding is being put to very good use. In fact, I think the first item on the list, and I don't know whether Arthur or yourself will be able to confirm, I think it might even be the one which award, achieved an award through some awards process recently, the Market Towns Virtual High Street uh, mm -hmm. work with um, focused around Stone Market and Hadley. Again, superb. And it, this is the one which really encapsulates really what it's all about. Utilising the innovation, being creative and supporting local businesses to overcome these challenges. So a little bit of investment, a little bit of support is helping people to sort of can maintain their businesses and, uh, and continue to deliver, which is brilliant. And it's all around digital skills. There's support for apprenticeships, um, which we've uh, been putting through. And again, that is a little bit unique in that it's providing the funding to help apprenticeships, if you like, where it, they just need a little bit of help to maintain their role in an apprenticeship because they need a bit of funding, perhaps in a rural situation, to have a bit of equipment to enable them to carry on. So that's uh, been a really excellent sort of project. Uh, the Cambridge Norwich Tech Corridor, again, uh, just enabling the businesses to engage with that, which has proved uh, very useful. Uh, the C19 Creative landscapes piece engaged some capital and some revenue so that's where we started to use that capital funding from the let uh that again is continuing to work very well i know there's a presence in lower stuff from that but it's uh, that's going extraordinarily well there was a hub coordinator appointed to help um connecting up some innovative work um around the connected innovation piece uh again um using that digital piece using that innovative approach which has been absolutely first class um and then there was some uh, some hot desking and some innovative space delivered through the innovate local bid again helping people and that, that particularly helping to liven up some of those areas and uh, and engaging uh sort of local businesses Chairman, I'm not sure you really want me to go through all of these. But I can just say you, you're sensing a th uh, really the reason I just went through those was you're sensing a theme. I'm sure you're sensing a theme, which yes. is all about innovation, creativity and a little bit of seed funding from the public sector, which is what yourselves have provided, is enabling so many of these businesses to really take off and fly, which is just what we wanted to do. And I, I think the, the message is clear there. And th thank you for for bringing that to life, because Although it's um, we as leaders have heard um, this before, um, our residents who may be watching this on on YouTube may not have. So um, thank you for bringing that to life. I'm going to bring in John Ward now because I, I suspect he will want to wax lyrical about the virtual high streets. John, you guess what I'm <laughs> going to say, haven't you? Um, 
No, and I will build a bit on what Stephen has said, and and I know I'm probably going to sound a bit OTT, but this is a public meeting, so uh, I want to take the opportunity to, to be able to praise this fund, because in my mind it is one of the most important investment commitments we have made recently, and, and not just because it's designed to address uh, the huge impact that, that COVID's had on our economy, but because it really is delivering beyond our best expectations, and it is excellent value for money, or at least it certainly is in Baber and, of course, Mid-Suffolk. The virtual high street, Stephen has mentioned, uh, it has been a resounding success and the latest statistics are much better than even those presented um, on page five of the paper. We've now got more than 150 businesses signed up in Sudbury, 65 in Hadley, 80 in Stone Market. And I, I think I, I've, I've been told about 70 percent of these have not previously had an online presence, which um, which is saying something for, for its success. I'm also really pleased, as Stephen has mentioned, that this project was recognised nationally at the IEZ Public Sector Transformation Awards a couple of weeks ago, and we won gold in the asset management and regeneration category. And while I was there, several attendees from other parts of the country did, did approach me, and they were genuinely interested in the potential it has for them. And of course, um, again, as Stephen has mentioned, the Innovate Local uh, in Baber and Mid-Suffolk is a truly imaginative scheme to encourage and support new businesses. The innovation labs in Stone Market are soon going to be extended to a vacant unit we've got in Sudbury, and the Hadley pop up market stall is also proving popular. So, I think, in summary, the help these initiatives are giving to existing and new businesses alike, it's really making a difference and, um, and is showing how the public sector can support recovery successfully. So, I think, I think this is um, uh, a great fund, and, and um, uh, we should be proud that we've been able to set it up. Thanks, Susie. Lovely. Thank you, John. Uh, Tim? Yeah, thanks. I want to um, build on what um, Steve and uh, John have said. I mean, I, I'm so pleased to hear the news about this and I want to congratulate everybody. What I was going to say was that I think this is such a good news story. We all need lifting out of this gloom and despondency that there has tended to prevail over the last 18 months for obvious reasons because of that dreaded word. But publicising where we're going here and really ramping this up, I think is something that I would ask, can we do more on that? Um, because I think it will provide that, if you like, catalyst, that spirit of innovation. We've talked about it, startup business. I mean, Suffolk's economy is dominated by SME businesses and anything we can do to support the innovation, particularly for young people starting up, has to be commended. And I think this does it in a bucket loads. So can I just ask, Let's let's do a little more on, on publicity where it's appropriate. Um, and also in a few months time, I'm sure there'll be some stellar results. Can we have that fed back, please, in six, eight months? Whatever you think. Oh, yeah. And then, Steve, that will really give people across the whole county an uplift. And I think at this time it is so important to do that. But really well done to everybody involved. There are already some great results coming through and I'm delighted. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Chris? Thanks, Susie. Uh, we're just going to add a few uh, brief comments from the LEPS perspective uh, in the absence of CJ, my chair, who I know uh, wanted to be here and is obviously very supportive of the, the scheme. Um, I was just uh, going to just just going to offer a couple of lessons learned, you know, in a really positive sense uh, about this programme. There have been a number of interesting, really interesting, innovative projects from individual districts, and we've been able to deliver those. What I think of one of the real benefits of it being a pooled approach has been sharing those ideas. So I know, and Stephen will uh, will, will, will say that the uh, and and colleagues in West Suffolk will say the same thing that they've been really interested in what's happening in Stowmark and Hadley. Could we try this in East Suffolk? Could we try this in West Suffolk and so on? So so really interesting, innovative ideas have been able to be uh, sharing best practice, which I think is uh, uh, is an underestimated. Uh, value and so on. And I think that, that, that by, by this mechanism, we've been able to do that. We've also been able to have, uh, as you've seen from the paper, uh, a coherent plan. Uh, there was a danger when you launch a project like this, you'll have uh, your programme like this, you'll have a bit of a scattergun approach and so on. Um, but that's not been the case. Uh, and digital high streets, uh, innovation, uh, as Stephen said, there's absolutely clear themes. Um, and rather than it being a collection of individual projects, we do have a really strong package. So I think the uh, while we have individual really interesting projects, actually they work together as a coherent package, which I think is really important. Um, and you know, I, I think has been mentioned, uh, delivering great value for money, which it has done, um, and unlocked private sector investment. One of the challenges of COVID naturally has been the private sector has been reluctant to invest 
in many cases they've had to stop trading so they so and they've taken on debt uh, by putting in uh, modest amounts of public money we have unlocked quite a lot of uh, uh, of private sector money and improve their confidence which i think is uh, is really important and i was going to mention just finally the uh, connected innovation project which which is run by the lep again that's another really interesting example of how do we connect up our innovation centers who are doing great things but could be seen as little ice islands in their own world orbis or uh, or the Haver, new hoverhill center how do we get them to collaborate with each other and most importantly how do we get some of the interesting stuff that they're doing into some of our market towns uh, 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 like Sudbury as, as being a good example or felix so and so on and uh, that the project and the funding that you have uh, put forward has enabled us to do, to do all of that. So uh, those are the points I just wanted to make. So thank you, uh, Chair, for letting me make those. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, this this for me is a, a magnificent example of our combined strong collaborative leadership. Mm -hmm. None of us could do this on our own, um, but together. We are greater than the sum of our parts, and uh, I think uh, this is a fantastic example of of Suffolk working together. Yep. Thank you, thank you very much, Steve. If Steve. I just if I could just reply to uh, Count, uh, Tim Passmore's point, uh, hmm. Chairman, if I may, absolutely, we'll be feeding back regularly uh, as 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 the uh, as the funds are spent, sharing that success with you, making sure you're aware. No doubt, no doubt about that at all. And yes, just to echo your point, it just shows how. The Suffolk system partnership working across Suffolk is really generating huge benefits, and all, and particularly, I mean, obviously working with the LEP, but also the Chamber. Um, yeah. The Chamber made a real effort to support us in this, yes. and and provide their input from there uh, what they know about it. So that's worked really, really well. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, everybody. Um, moving on to our next item, I'd like to to welcome Councillor Andy Drummond to the meeting. I think this is your first time here, Andy, so welcome. Uh, Andy's here as Chair of the Climate Change, Environment and Energy Portfolio Holders Group. Um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susie. And uh, I believe I have some slides that are coming up. Yeah. Um, certainly people will have had um, in their agenda pack the slides if, um, if we don't manage to get them on screen. So I'll start by saying uh, good morning, everybody. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Councillor Andy Drummond, Portfolio Holder for Environment and Regulatory at West Suffolk District Council. And I'm also the chair of the Suffolk Environment Portfolio Holders Group. Uh, and this group steers the work of the Suffolk Officer Board for Climate Change, Environment and Energy. It's a privilege to work with colleagues across the county on this. Critical Sorry, Andy, can I just um, interject a minute? Caroline, would you mind putting the slides on to present of you? Makes it easier to read. Thank you. Sorry, carry on, Andy. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a privilege to work with colleagues across the county on this critical topic. And I'm delighted that we have such a coherent and co co collaborative, can't say it, uh, plan to take us on our journey to our shared aspiration of carbon neutrality by 2030. I'd like to start by just reminding us all of the journey that we've been on. So the um, slide there is, is showing um, sort of where we are now, um, and that's been achieved with uh, funding of about 100k. So in 2019, you allocated this 100, um, funding to deliver a baseline evidence report. Um, and this was effectively the state of the climate in Suffolk and opportunities to affect change. Uh, we used the funding to undertake stakeholder research and develop Suffolk's Climate Emergency Plan, often referred to as the SCEP, that you agreed and launched earlier this year. That plan is underpinned by a detailed action plan and many projects are underway beneath it. So we've seen some positive press coverage and we have a small funding balance to take us to the next stages of delivery. As you know, this is a very ambitious plan. So I must thank you for in the addition of a 1.5 million funding that you've normally allocated to support this delivery. This will be essential as we know it's no small challenge ahead of us. If we can now move on to the next slide.
it, it, it's the one with the, the SPL funding columns. So it's slide number three. Do we have a technical problem? I'm afraid we do. It's showing, it, it was showing AK on my screen. I'll reload it. Many apologies. Thank you. <laughs> That's the one. So the board would like to draw down an initial 150,000 of that funding to enable us to put in place the foundations for successful delivery. The slide shows the three categories of work. So in the first column, um, this is the program management capacity. Um, this is essentially to bring together the delivery plan with an initial focus on priority actions, and it's needed to coordinate work and agree the baseline data and a monitoring and reporting framework. There's still 16K from the funding allocated to produce the plan and evidence base, and 60,000 would support this post in year one. The second column, communications, we know how critical effective engagement and communications are. New compelling narratives will play an important role in inspiring and mobilising mainstream participation in solutions, adoption of technologies and shifts in behaviours. To support this in Suffolk, we're seeking £40,000 to design and commission a communications campaign. And portfolio holders have agreed the initial focus should be on housing. We also have a Suffolk COP26 event that Jill will outline shortly. Column three is to support delivery and to move towards some aspects of the plan, some additional information will assist us. We want to commission modelling that pulls together information on energy demand, generation, storage and distribution assets, social factors like fuel poverty and characteristics like building design, and types of local geography. This can then be used to inform decision making and deploy deployment of assets. We'll also bring together a review of financial options for local authorities, businesses and communities. A nominal ask of 50k will support this and any other baseline studies that we require. The Environment Portfolio Holders Group will be working with the board to ensure that a robust performance management framework is developed and we will report back to leaders on progress against the plan. As mentioned earlier, I would like to take the opportunity to share the plan of activities that partners across Suffolk are delivering to support COP26 and I'll hand over to Jill, who is the chair of the board, to do this. Many thanks. Councillor Drummond, thank you very much. My apologies for joining slightly late. I had a few technical issues at this end. Uh, Caroline, thank you very much for doing the slides. Um, so, yes, the approach that we've taken across Suffolk is to bring together a programme of events which complement um, COP26, and they've actually already started. So on the screen there, you can see um, some of the examples. So some webinars have taken place for Suffolk's voluntary sectors. We've had the zero carbon tour bus that visited Ipswich at the beginning of the month. Then next month, the Chamber of Commerce, they're doing an event for businesses, which is 10 steps to net zero. And I understand there's already an awful lot of interest in that. And later in the month, Baber and Mid Suffolk um, have organised a local energy showcase, which is um, quite a, a, a really interesting event over two days, um, which is open to the whole of the county, to businesses, to homeowners, to, to energy providers. Some very interesting speakers um, will be attending that to look about energy opportunities for now and the future. The NHS are holding a green NHS day. And then we've got, um, as part of um, COP26, we've been invited to share case studies from Suffolk, which will be part of a digital showcase um, for the national event. COP26 ends on the 12th of November, and that coincides with Suffolk's Greenest County Awards, which the County Council is, is hosting and celebrates a range of green achievements um, across Suffolk. And then keeping the thing going after COP26, we're hosting um, a, a three day event, actually, with a number of um, inputs in regard to low carbon homes, encouraging people to take advantage of the technologies that are out there in order to, to make improvement to your homes. 
So we've got a range of events and that's just the start, if you like, of our communications journey because we know we've got an awful lot to do. But as Councillor Drummond said, that focused on homes initially, given the challenges that we have to decarbonise both um, our existing housing stock and the new housing stock that's coming to Suffolk is significant. So we want to take those opportunities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Jill. And do you want to add anything, Stephen, as um, commissioning or sponsoring chief exec? I think are we having some trouble? Did I send everybody to sleep? <laughs> Stephen, are you there? Certainly not. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, good. Uh, yep. S Stephen, did, did you want to, to summarise anything as you're the uh, the sponsoring chief? I believe. Um, uh, oh, hold on, let me just put the camera on there, Chairman. Yes, I'm, my apologies, Chairman. I was working from home, has its hazards. And that <laughs> precise moment, I had a hazard at home. Never mind, <laughs> we're, we're, we're carrying on. No, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's, we're early days, but with, with Jill's stewardship and certainly with Councillor Drummond's chairmanship, we're, we're doing brilliantly well. We're moving things forward. Um, fortunately for Suffolk, um, we have a meeting coming up, um, or the local chief executives across the country have a, chief, have a meeting coming up with the permanent secretaries uh, in a little while. And um, I am one of the representatives at that meeting. So we'll be able to certainly reinforce the message from Suffolk and indeed for the whole region, as far as that's concerned. I think the challenge that we face is that this is such a broad challenge in so many ways. Um, the initiatives which Jill's just explained um, are certainly a, a brilliant start, but the opportunities within Suffolk to respond in the broadest sense, whether that's from the energy agenda, whether it's through sort of uh, all, all the various sort of inclusive growth e efforts that we're making, is just huge. And I think that is perhaps the challenge, how we manage the scale of our response to the climate change challenge itself. But other than that, no, thank you. I haven't got anything else to add. Um, Jill's just doing a brilliant job as always. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a few questions now. Tim. Thanks, Susie. Well, it, it, again, it's more of a more of a comment, actually. But um, and I know the police don't get involved in housing stocks and a lot of local uh, authority activities. But I just want to reassure everybody that we are taking the steps to do whatever we can about our carbon footprint. And as I said before, regarding scarce natural resources. So we are in the process of recruiting and therefore appointing a full-time sustainability um, officer um, to help us with this work relating to our estate, which is quite extensive, what we can do there, and also looking at fleet management and waste reduction in general. The only comment I want to make on this is, of course, a lot of these things are going to cost a whole bucket load of money, a lot of pound notes here. So we need to have that as a really serious consideration. And I shall be looking forward to finding out if there were any announcements in the uh, budget um, in October or announcements from the Home Office, because making some of these improvements will have to become at a cost. And clearly, we will need some assistance to do that if we are to uh, join in this with, with this very laudable aspiration. So I'm not in any way being negative, but I just want to point out the demand that we all face is considerable. And if we are going to make some difference on this, we're going to have to find the pound notes from somewhere. So that's a challenge. But I absolutely agree. It's really important. And as Stephen was just saying, it's an enormous challenge covering so many facets of what we do, individual behaviours and everything else. So we'll do what we can to support it. I promise you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Steve? Uh, 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 thank you, Susie. And uh, and th thanks for the uh for the update on where we're going with this and the ask that's there. I just really wanted to make it clear, I suppose, uh, we know this is some public sector leaders, but I think it's important that we um, reiterate and reiterate this point again and again, that the Suffolk public sector leaders are trying to add additionality um, to a whole lot of work that is going on right across the county from all our individual um, organisations. Um, you know, the districts and the county um, are are doing an awful lot of work against this agenda. And £1.5 million is a lot of money, but it is not enough money to do everything that we need to do, which is why um, it's really important um, that during the communications phase that, uh, that that has been mentioned here, um, we take the opportunity, if we can, to echo re and reinforce 
um, the other initiatives that are going on across the, the county as a whole. I think, you know, the, the the asks and the initiatives and the messages that the district councils and the, and the county council indeed are trying to get out there is above and beyond um, the 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 additionality um, that this uh, this group is adding. Now I know we've got our portfolio holders um, uh, as part of this group, which is excellent. But we do need to um, charge them with making sure that uh, that you know we we look at the wider picture and use this 1.5 million pounds to add that additionality um, to everything else that is going on and make sure that that people understand that that's what this is. It's an extra bit. It's the icing on the cake. Um, but the vast majority of the cake is being delivered at uh, a district and borough levels. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Uh, and and Mid Suffolk and Baber are a, a prime example of, of that, where we are the first rural, rural districts in the whole of the country to convert our entire bin fleet to hydro treated vegetable oil, uh, which is something that I'm I'm really proud of. I'm going to bring in now Stephen. Thank you. You're on mute, Stephen. Oh, forgive me. Um, I was going to talk about COP26, Chair, but uh, I see yes. some other hands have gone up, which are probably related to this. I don't know if you wanted to take them first. No, no feel free. Go ahead. OK, um, I just um, I know that everyone um, wants to know that our your police officers uh, will be up in Scotland for a protracted period of time. Tim and I have obviously uh, been briefed into the policing commitment as uh, as your officers were down in Devon earlier in the year supporting the um, the conference there. Uh, it's a significant abstraction, one that we've planned for. And the only reason I raise it is that we've seen uh, a number of protests continue around the country. We're fortunate that we haven't seen any in the county yet. We are uh, prepared and planned for those. We don't have any intelligence. Uh, and equally, um, I note with the news from the Labour leader overnight, saying that uh, the Labour Party would support Sizewell C, um, some commentary as well from the government talking about building new power stations as a priority. Um, we don't, again, have any intelligence around Sizewell, but we have uh, good links in with them. But we may, my professional feeling is that we may potentially see some local protests as well as the, the protests that we see up uh, in Glasgow during the COP26 period. It's just for people's information, I will obviously stay connected with your chief execs, as I always do, if there's anything particular to your districts or boroughs. Happy to take any questions, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, John? Susie, thank you very much. Actually, coming in a bit um, after Tim and Steve, I'd just like to echo their comments actually all around. There's a huge amount of work going on at all levels throughout Suffolk, but I'd like to thank Andy and Jill and their colleagues for um, all the work they're doing and, and working across Suffolk. Um, there's obviously the communications because nobody can do this all on their, on their own. Um, I think Suffolk Public Sector is putting a huge amount of additional effort into this, but it's actually getting everybody else to, in, to get involved both for the benefit of, you know, all the environmental issues and actually um, for businesses. And actually, if we can spread the word at things like the West Suffolk Business Festival, which is coming up fairly shortly to all the businesses and all the other events like that throughout, I think that would be very helpful. And I certainly know that Andy and Jill and others will be doing that. But um, so I'm very enthusiastic about this and actually also very keen to see that the monies we're allocating are delivered as swiftly as possible throughout Suffolk and and attracting a lot of the important match funding which is necessary. But thank you, Susie. You're totally supportive. Lovely. Thank you, John. Matthew. Thanks, Susie. And and obviously we uh, welcome you know, welcome this uh, report. Thanks for bringing it forward, Andy. Um, you know the county council obviously uh, has a, a very significant role, uh, and we are doing all playing our part as well. Whether it's across our estate, across our fleet. But in everything we do, the climate emergency uh, is at the forefront of our thinking, and that's been clear for some time. So the County Council is very much embedded, as are the districts and the boroughs together, in doing what we can to deliver for the whole of Suffolk. And I think this is a really important part of that wider piece of work that we're all doing together. So I welcome it and thank you for bringing it, Andy, today. Thank you, Matthew. 
so if there if there's um no more comments or questions so this is a request to release 150,000 um can i take it that everybody's in agreement yes excellent thank you very much indeed and thank you andy and jill for coming along and presenting that to us thank, thank you. you very much for having us and thank you for agreeing to the ask it's much better <laughs> and we'll use the money well and wisely. well absolutely thank you, thank you. thank you very much um now we're moving on to item six which is suffolk's approach to county deals uh, i'm going to invite matthew to give us an update on our meeting that we had with the um civil servants at MHCLG a couple of weeks ago. Over to you, Matthew. Thanks, Susie. Um, yes, yeah, so um, just really to give a sort of overview and an update of where we're at. So following, obviously, an invitation from ministers during the summer, um, I'm really pleased that Suffolk has been able to flag up uh, our ambition uh, and look at the opportunity that a county deal might bring to our county. So yes, we submitted an expression of interest to government uh, back in August um, with the districts and boroughs in the county all together. And I'm really pleased that this was fully supported by all of Suffolk's MPs who came in behind us uh, giving full support. And we met with civil servants in September uh, and we expect the levelling up white paper probably uh, will come around the time of the spending review just shortly after or around the 27th of October. So, uh, as Susie said, uh, Councillor Moore and myself, we did lead the discussions with government officials. And actually, we went there and we were able to highlight Suffolk's very strong track record of working together and our joined up delivery approach that actually we've been talking about through this meeting, which are really good examples. So, um, we took that as an opportunity to explain to, uh, to civil servants and to really push uh, the importance. We highlighted the connectivity. Um, in the counties, in our county's strength, with um, international, internationally significant assets, um, and actually the unique offer we have as a county to global Britain, and we uh, did that through uh, various things. We did it through trade, talking about trade, innovation, and energy. So we gave examples of the Felixstowe Freeport, clearly the largest UK's container port. Talked about Adastral Park and the BT's headquarters there. Uh, and the birthplace of fibre, as we often say, and the Global Technology Research Park that sits there. And we talked about the unique energy offer that Suffolk has, uh, particularly with the world's largest offshore wind market and obviously um, the developments there. So we were also able to then to go on and we wanted to really emphasise to governments uh, Suffolk's strong governance structures, which are clearly robust and accountable. Uh, and we see that obviously through SPSL. Uh, and that we emphasise that actually SPSL is in place, it works well, and we are ready to deliver already. Um, we then went on and highlighted examples of where we've, uh, to show how we've done that, where we've um, used, invested the sh our share of the local business rate pool to support our strategic recovery approach. And we've talked about it this morning, but we did, of course, mention the Suffolk Inclusive Growth Investment Fund. Um, which we know, as we've been talking about today, is a, to uh, support a wide range of local economic recovery projects um, and to try and mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 on businesses, employers and employees in Suffolk. So we emphasise that point to civil servants. Uh, we talked about um, the Suffolk Welfare Assistance Scheme, where actually we'd taken the approach as Suffolk public sector leaders invest, uh, we matched uh, debt for us funding to actually increase that opportunity to support families in, that were in urgent need throughout the pandemic with real practical help. And obviously that was items such as furniture and white goods uh, and uh, helping with electricity and gas top ups um, throughout the pandemic. Uh, we also emphasised uh, another subject we've been talking today, the Suffolk's Climate Emergency Plan, uh, and talked about how that was a really another good example of the collaborative approach and our countywide ambition for net zero uh, and the path to carbon neutrality by 2030. And also we talked about the community-based approach around things like the multi-agency hubs to tackle criminal exploitation, gangs and county lines. So we went, excuse me, we went in there to give really good examples of how the governance is robust and the structures that are already in place. Um, of course, we then went on to give sort of uh, early examples of ideas that we could use to sh shape a deal. 
Um, and we highlighted examples uh, of where actually by coming together, we could provide better value for money for the taxpayer and better outcomes. Uh, and we highlighted examples uh, where this is happening. For example, um, we're all, you know, if you look at ambulance, police and fire stations, actually we're one of the most uh, joined up working in those, in those facilities. We are one of the most advanced counties in the country uh, with shared facilities. Um, we talked about shared offices uh, with the districts and the county uh, and in fact the NHS all sharing shared space. We talked about the national exemplars of multi-agency hubs and of course that was the Milden Hall hub that we discussed uh, the, and also we went on to talk about the exciting collaboration that's happened with the University of Suffolk, our public sector, the VCS that's created the Integrated Care Academy. So um, really good examples of that we that we have already that we could highlight in Suffolk. Uh, we also went on to highlight how Suffolk could demonstrate um, the levelling up agenda can work actually in a number of areas. So we have a diverse coastal, we have a uh, area, we have rural and small urban county town, county geography. We have market towns, we have major towns like Bury St Edmunds, Ipswich, Lowestoft. Um, and so actually we have a good range of, of uh, a broad area that could benefit all our residents across Suffolk from being one of the early pilot areas. So we now have to sit and wait. Uh, clearly, there's a new department now, the Leveling Up Housing and Communities Department, and will shape presumably the white paper that we expect to come forward. So um, we obviously sit and wait and hope that we will be considered as a uh, as a county pilot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And I think just to add a little bit, or not, not to add, but to enhance what Matthew said about it's the strong collaborative leadership across the whole of Suffolk that um, I think I'm most proud of. Um, and clearly it's something that um, the ministry ministers wanted to see. Um, it, and it's not just districts and boroughs, a county, uh, CCGs, the Care Academy, the, the universities, the LEP, the VCS, but also the private sector that we we um, bring in to help fund some of these initiatives where we can. So I'm, I'm really proud of our collaborative way of working and I, I think that sets us apart from even even our close neighbours. So thank you for that update, Matthew. Um, John? Um, thanks, Susie. You, you preempted empted um, much of what I was going to say, in fact, all of what I was going to say, but I just wanted to <laughs> add, um, I think on behalf of all of us, my thanks to Matthew and you for um, fronting this presentation to the civil servants if they can't see the opportunities for the country in getting behind Suffolk which does show how to make things happen it would be very disappointing and I'm um, just very grateful to you and I'm very impressed that you and Matthew managed to cover all those things in half an hour which is all we were given <laughs> but I think there's every reason thanks to your efforts and everybody else's across the public sector private sector, as you say, and voluntary sector, actually, in, in Suffolk, that um, the government will advise to um, support us and um, put their muscle behind our efforts, uh, both in the interests of East, the Eastern region and the whole country. But thank you, Susie. Thank you. And, and also just pulling together all that information in a very short space of time, I think, was testament to how we work together. We, we do work really agilely, you know, putting all that together in just a couple of days almost, or less than a week, uh, was a fantastic achievement. And I'd like to thank all, all of you leaders, all of you leaders, for, for your contributions and suggestions. I'm going to bring in now Ed. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. I would definitely echo uh, uh, John's tribute there. Um, it's well known that health and social care integration in Suffolk is more advanced than many areas of the country, but I think what's also quite unique is the level of integration work between the health service and the district and borough councils, and there are numerous examples from social prescribing to discharge of patients. Um, so uh, if, there's, if we can support um, this bid in any way from a health service perspective to talk about that very mature level of working we've got, across the county, I know that uh, Melanie and I would be very happy to do so. Thank you very much, Ed. 
So if there's no more on that, thank, thank you very much, Matthew, uh, for talking us through that. I'm going to move on now to item seven uh, and invite Tim Passmore to present an update on his police and crime plan. Uh, thank you very much, Susie. This uh, won't take a great deal of time, but just to raise the profile that I think all responsible authorities have uh, received a communication from us on our new draft police and crime plan, which will have a duration of three to four years. It sets the sort of blueprint, I suppose, for policing customised for what we need in Suffolk. And uh, I know we've already had some feedback, for example, from uh, Mid Suffolk and Baber. Really welcome that. Um, it is a very important document and we want to get it right so that's why you have been asked to respond so please don't hold back i know you never do um but it does set the way forward um for the next few years so we welcome your your, your feedback and um if you could get that in as soon as possible then we will arrange a series of uh, meetings to catch up online with you and just discuss things in detail as is required uh, I just wanted to make one other comment um, on, on that, Susie. After we've done that, timescales are tight, we will incorporate that and revise the plan accordingly. Then it goes out for public consultation to get comments in from somewhere around about the middle of October, which will last for about a month. And then we will tidy it up and it will be hopefully agreed, not preempting anything at the police and crime panel at the January meeting before it um, swings into action um, at the end of this financial year, beginning of the next financial year, really important. One other piece of news that I would like to share with everybody, I am promised for the third time that there is going to be a funding formula review for policing. This is the Home Office Settlement. Um, and I know I sound like a stuck record on this, but I'm not giving up on, on the issue regarding funding. And I know Suffolk gets a pretty poor deal in nearly every other area of the public sector. But just to put it into perspective, uh, for example, we get five pounds per resident in Suffolk less than in Norfolk. Um, so five times 760,000 people shows you the gap there. Um, we get £114 per resident from the Home Office grant, and if you compare that with places like Merseyside and the West Midlands, Merseyside gets £217 from the Home Office grant per person, West Midlands 199 Now, this discrepancy is so big, and with the levelling up agenda, at least some progress on that would be required, um, because this is about the future of Suffolk, good policing, and I think the same applies as we've written collectively as public sector leaders. I think it was last year. Um, there is an opportunity for this. We need to help each other. I'm really grateful for everybody's support, but that puts into stark reality. And with that and council tax combined, we are, I'm afraid, right at the bottom of the pile, second lowest funded force, um, only Essex is slightly below us. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. I'm still carrying on with this uh, campaign. And we need our MPs involved in this. Um, and if we do get to fruition with this funding form review, then we'll do our very best to make sure we get a better deal for Suffolk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Can I just ask, um, you mentioned a timetable for your police and crime plan. Um, yes. Do you have a date by when you would like all of our individual our council comments to come in to you? Is there a deadline? <laughs> Well, we haven't got an official deadline, but if you could do that by the middle of next month, say within two, perhaps three weeks at the outside, I'd be really, really grateful for that. We can still incorporate those when we go out into public consultation, but the views of local authorities in particular and, and other responsible authorities are, are really, really important. So we can make sure we've got a plan that we can all get behind. And as we're here today, public sector leaders working together. So it will uh, be some more icing on the cake there. OK, thank you. thank you, Tim. Anybody got any questions or comments for Tim? No, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. Thanks. Um, moving on to the budget update. Um, I'm going to hand over to Ian Gallen to introduce this report. Thanks, Chair. Pretty straightforward. Um, so you've got the budget report in your papers. This is obviously, um, in effect, it's one meeting in arrears. So this reflects the allocations and the uh, the earmarking uh, around our recovery strategies that you agreed at your meeting on the just checking 25th of June. Uh, so it reflects that position now, and you'll see those uh, those allocations uh, in line with our uh, wider recovery plan. Uh, we'll obviously now update it following your decisions today. So it reflects the decisions on the 25th of June, and then we'll obviously update it following the allocation of uh, 
uh, actual spend against, um, for example, the climate change work today. So reflects the last uh, set of decisions you made, Chair, and we'll we'll uh, update that for the next meeting. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Anybody want to add anything? No. Okay. And finally, any other business? Anybody got anything on anything they want to say? No, thank you, no? Susie. Lovely. Thank you very much, then. I'm going to close the meeting uh, at 11.28. Our next meeting will be at 10.30 on the 26th of November. Thank you very much, everybody. Good. Chair, Good just just Great, tell me you when the much. live streams stopped. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Susie. See, Bye. see you at LOEB in a minute, in a couple of hours. Have some lunch first. <laughs> Bye.